All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to my Minecraft Feed the Bee series and yet another rainy day. This this world really seems to rain quite a bit, which is a little bit strange, but eh, oh well. But yes, today we are going to get a few more things ready to go that will help us in our inevitable goal of making an arcology. But one important thing, of course, is the villagers. It's the whole reason I'm wanting to build an arcology, is to store a whole load of villagers there and give them a nice, safe place to live, away from the threat of zombies and skeletons and so forth. And, well, I need more villagers. So I've been going out on my own and exploring the world, and I've found a couple of villages, one over that way, another over that way, which is going to be great because it's really going to help us with our population. But I did bring back one of those villagers. I'm kind of storing them at their villages for now for safekeeping. I've locked them in like I have here. But this guy, this guy right here, I brought back for safekeeping because I want to keep him very much alive because of his wonderful trade. Ten emeralds for an Eye of Ender. That is wonderful. Um, there are a lot of high-level recipes that need that, plus it'll make life a lot easier trying to get to the end with having him just selling Eye of Enders. Once I finally find a fortress, which hopefully won't take too much longer, haven't had much luck with it yet, but we still have time. But yeah, of course we need many, many more resources before we can really go full-on into building the Arcology, and I wanted to work on some of those today. One, I need to start making more diamonds for various recipes and tools and things along that... Bleh, bleh, cannot talk today. Things along those lines. There we go. And so today I'm going to go over how we can use the macerator and the compressor. That is the compressor, right? Yes, yes it is. To make diamonds. But first, we need resources to do that, and we need to start making them quicker. So I want to go over today how to build overclockers that we can put into these industrial tech machines, which will make them go a lot faster. Uh, I think I just need four. That's five, but eh, that works. Now, what an overclocker does is once you install it, into one of these slots here, what it will do is it will increase the rate at which it does its job, but it will also increase power usage. Now we've got a pretty good power situation here, so I don't mind putting them into these things. So let's do this here. Now there are a couple of different recipes for making overclockers based on what resources you have. But last episode, we were making these helium coolant cells to make our laser. And so I made a few extras so that one, in case I lose this, I can build another. But also so that we can make two overclockers at the same time. Now, let me just bring up the recipe here real quick. The basic overclocker recipe is 10k coolant cells which is really simple. It's just a bucket of water surrounded by tin on four sides. Very, very simple recipe. And that will make one. But doing it with the helium coolant cells will produce two. Now there are... Yes, there is one more with the 60k uh, potassium nitrate. Is that that right? Um, oh, it's been a while since I've taken chemistry. Um, but yeah, this produces two. Which is wonderful. We can just plop that in and plop that as well. And I think these stack a bit. And there we go. We have four. Now I'm going to put two of them in here. And two of them in here. Whoop. That's not where it needs to go. And let's go grab some more coal. I'm also going to need flint and obsidian for this. Now, as you can see in the macerator, I already had some coal going, as it does take a while to macerate. But actually, let's take these overclockers out real quick. Pop this coal in. You can see how slowly it goes to macerate the coal. 
Let's just wait for it to finish here, and then we will pop in these overclockers and see the difference, which should be noticeable. All right. There we go. Now if we pop in these overclockers, uh, look at how much faster it goes. And that's just with two overclockers. You can put more in here, and it'll just help keep it go along, which is wonderful. Now that we have 64 coal dust, because it does take an entire stack of coal to make a single diamond, which may sound like a lot, but I've already got a huge number of stacks of coal going thanks to my turtle mines. And what we do is put it in a crafting table around like that and put flint in the center, and that will create coal balls, which will get eight of those. Now what we do is we put the coal balls in the compressor and we have an overclocker in here as well, so this shouldn't take too much time. And this is going to compress the coal balls into compressed coal ball. <laughs> okay, not, not exactly the most original name ever, but... All right, and that thing is going quite nicely. I am pleased about that, but I'm gonna take these overclockers out and pop them in here. So we can get through this bit a lot quicker. It, I mean, just come on, look at it go. It's just going bam, bam, bam. Now it is using more power. I believe each overclocker increases the power usage by 12%. Now I, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I, that, that seems like the right number to me. And well, that is a fair amount of draw, especially if you have a lot of overclockers in a machine and you have multiple machines with them and yeah you could put overclockers into electric furnaces well you can't put them in the centrifuge that's build craft <laughs> but yeah basically nearly any industrial craft machinery you can put those overclockers in and they will increase the production massively now there are other upgrades which i'll just quickly look at here in a second but yes, once we have the compressed coal balls, we put them back in the crafting table along there, and one obsidian block in the center, and you get a coal chunk. Now if we put the coal chunk back into the compressor, and with the lovely overclockers let it go, bam, we have a diamond. All right, now that is a little bit of a process to do, but... Nonetheless, you find a huge amount of coal, especially once we do build the quarry here within a few episodes. We are going to have loads of coal. I think I already have about eight stacks of coal right now, just for my turtles, which could make eight diamonds for us, which doesn't seem like a lot, but that's eight diamonds we wouldn't have had otherwise. And with the overclockers added into the mix, it helps speed up the process. Let's put those back into the macerator to get these through, and I'll make more diamonds with those later. Now, if we just quickly look at the NEI to the other upgrades, now you'll see a whole load of upgrades for various things. But the main upgrades I tend to use are these down here. You have the energy storage upgrade, which you can use on any machine that stores power, and it will increase its storage. Uh, the transformer upgrade... Ah, uh, that... Oh, I'll be honest, I'm not actually remembering what that does at the moment. I've never used you. <laughs> the overclocker and the energy storage ones are the ones that I use most often. I will probably be making a lot of these, which how much... That's not that bad to make. I couldn't remember exactly. It's basically like making another a bat pack, though with an electric circuit in there. But yes, these overclockers are extraordinarily important. They make life so much easier because they increase the speed of all of these machines so that they work far, far quicker but for a much higher power draw, so you kind of have the trade-off of what exactly you want to do. But for me, and with the power that we have, 
thankfully that's not really an issue. We're getting good power from our windmills, our solar cells, and once I upgrade our industrial blast furnace, we'll be able to smelt aluminium so we can also make some water wheels. And sometime soon I'll also start to mess around with nuclear reactors. Now I, I generally avoid those for a little bit because I'm 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 always afraid that I'm going to blow everything up with them. But, but the arcology that we're going to build is going to need a lot of power. So we are going to have to go with nuclear and potentially down the road even fusion power, which I have never attempted. So that should be interesting once we get to that point. I'm looking forward to it and I hope that I don't destroy my whole world. Oh, I probably will. <laughs> But yes, that is some ways into the future. But it will be fun. I'm looking forward to it. And within a few episodes here, we are going to start working on the potential site over there. I'm right now kind of playing around with a program that I'm writing for the Turtles for them to start the construction for me. Because if, you know, if I do it myself, it's going to take ages to actually build that place. So I'm going to be using turtles to build, for now, the foundation and eventually all the walls and so forth once I have that program finished. Hopefully that'll be soon, because I do want to get started on my arcology, as it is going to be a very fun project. And that also means I can bring all of my villagers that I have found over there, put them all in one place and have them nice and safe from all the evil, evil mobs like you down there, zombie. Yeah, that's right, I'm talking to you. Yeah. I wonder if I could shoot him from here. Hmm. Let's see. Long range? Nope. Oh, well. <laughs> I hope you all have enjoyed the episode. And Oh, that world hole is back over there. For some reason, I keep getting a world hole over here that takes forever to load. I don't know why. Hmm. Let's go over there real quick. I really should just be ending the episode, but this keeps annoying me. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. This big chunk of the world here just takes forever to load, and actually half the time it won't even load until I update these blocks, so I've been shooting it with my laser. And that tends to get it back up and going. Well, tends to. It's not today. Huh. I really don't know what's going on with this, but if this stays like this and I cannot find a way to fix it effectively, I may be moving my site location because I don't want some giant world hole within view. Man, that's strange. It's not updating. Usually when I shoot it with a laser, it fixes itself. Let's try the explosive. Maybe that it just needs more blocks to update. Whoop, that hurt. And no, that did nothing. <sighs> World holes. Gotta love them. Okay, well, yes, that is going to be it for this episode. I hope you have enjoyed, and that, of course, you come back for the next. And have a good one.